I'm excited to bring this word forth. Now, this is a word that was profoundly prophetic, and I had no idea why I was even called to minister this particular word. This word is from 2011, and it's called The Year of the Woman. It was part of a two-part series where God had been dealing with me personally about what he was getting ready to do in the lives of women. Unbeknownst to me that three years after this word, I would meet and marry Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts before she was Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts. In fact, in fact, she was just Sarah Jakes, a blogger, an author. And as God would have it, this word that I was ministering to men and women, inspiring women into who God created them to be and challenging men to become Josephs and midwives to produce all that was, was, in, was in them. I had no idea that God would send me a Mary, that I would have to be a Joseph too. I had no idea that what God would, would birth through that woman that God sent my way would underscore very, very much the message that I'm getting ready to share with you today. It's gonna bless you. It's called the year of the woman. Young PT, 11 years ago, had a prophetic word that we saw play out on stage globally as it relates to Pastor Sarah and Woman Evolve. Check this message out. It's going to bless you. Wow. If there was a title, I'm, I'm tell, I'm, I don't know if I've ever been this broken about a word. Ever. I even dressed up for it. And my, my security shot a couple of jokes on me on the way in. They asked me how many pies I would be selling today. I said, I'm not selling any pies today. That. <laughs> but, uh, but the title of this message is The Year of the Woman. And I believe prophetically that this is the year of the woman. And I also believe that we've stepped into a moment and a time where we're going to see literally a woman revolution. And just so that the brothers here do not feel left out. This very much is a word for you. And one of the things the Lord was speaking to me this morning is that we cannot walk in fullness unless we know each other's identity. Say that again. It's not simply you knowing your identity that is going to bring the fullness of God into play. But we have to know what each other's identity is so that as men, we can project right. Let me say that again. We have to know, as men, we have to know what women's, what the woman's identity is so that we can project right. That's very important. Because I don't want to be projecting an identity unto you that's not you. Because I can actually hinder you from your true identity if I project unto you my understanding of your identity. So it is important, and I can't experience what is truly on the inside of you unless I can project accurately. Are you hearing me? And the woman needs to recognize her identity. Men need to do so so that we can project right. Men, women need that revelation so that they can expect right. Because your expecting will determine our projecting. Are you hearing me? If I project what you don't expect after a while, after a few, you know, rejections of that projection, I'm going to project differently. Are you hearing me? I feel that thing so strongly. Oh, oh, you understand what I mean, though? Because we project according to our revelation, according to what we see. We project it, and if the woman doesn't know better, she'll receive what we project. So I need to know who you are so that I can project right, so that I can aid you in your identity, not give you a new one. And you need the revelation so that you can expect right. 
if I project what you don't expect and you reject it, then I got to go back to the drawing board and try to figure out how to come at you. Are you hearing me? This is a very, very important word. And, and, and the Lord started dealing with me early this week. And just, you know, I love it when God just starts. I love it when it's not something that you come up with. But when you, you, you walk with God and you come into a moment in time where, where what God has predetermined is. And if you're going to be with him, then you have to come into that isness. You know, I'm trying to like make it plain. You know what I mean? So in other words, you know, the scripture says in, in, in Romans 8 and 19, it says that all of creation eagerly awaits for the manifestation of the children of God, which means that, that, that at a point in time, God is doing something and everything has to begin to line up with it. And I'm telling you, this is the year of the woman. I cannot tell you, uh, good friend Tracy Blackwell, she's a part of this church, she's here today, um, had no idea I'd be preaching this message, sent me over something she'd been recognized in one of the publications as one of the, the top 20 uh, powerful women in the Los Angeles area. And let's honor and celebrate. Where's Tracy? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But I know, I know. But it just confirmed the word that God had given me. You know, then if you're reading the Times right now, the Times is honoring women because women basically rocked in the Olympics. There are more CEOs and executives and VPs in companies that are women now. And that is because God is doing something in the earth with women. And there have been a lot of misconceptions, and I know why, and, and I'll, I'll be on this for at least a couple of weeks, but, but I want to I go to the beginning. I want to go to Scripture in Genesis, and I want to really point out, I think, some misconceptions that we have had, and, and we're going to build from there. Is that cool? Yeah. All right, you got to pray with me, because this is a very important word. And, 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 and the reality of it is, at the end of the day, that we're all, men and women, going to leave out of here with a celebration, with a new revelation, with a mind renewal about the woman and who she is so that we can receive the fullness of God from that. So Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, and here we go. It says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Then it says, let them have dominion. It starts right there. Then God said, let us make man in our own image according to our likeness. And then he says, let them have dominion. Let them. Not let him. He says, let them. Are we together? And the them is not him and her together necessarily. You're not ready. It's them. Well, let me keep reading and then I'll just I'll dive into it because I'm about ready to take off. It says, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27. It says, so God created man in his own image, man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and what? Male and female. Male and female created his image. Male created his image and Female creating his image. Vertically, not horizontally. Let me take my time with this. Because the challenge is there is a subconscious belief that in order for the image of God to be expressed, it necessitates man and woman. Missed it. It's not true. Just as the man was created in the image of God, so was the woman. And if you have a limited perspective by thinking 
that it takes the man to fulfill the woman being created in the image of God or the woman to be added to the man to express the image of God. You just missed it. You just missed it. And that's why it is problematic. You know, you, you, you know, when you look at women's ministries, most women's, every women's ministry except the one in our church. <laughs> if you are honest, it is about the woman being all that she can be so that ultimately she can attract a man. You won't come out and say it. And all of it is always around Proverbs 31. Come on, let's keep it all the way real. It's always around Proverbs 31. I, I want to be a virtuous wife. I want to be a virtuous woman so that I can somehow attain to this, to the highest position of womanhood, which is to att attract a husband or an incredible man. Missed it. That's not, even pro that's not even what Proverbs 31 is all about. The, 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 the character of her husband in the scripture, he, he wasn't even a co-star. He's like barely in the story. He doesn't have any lines. <laughs> Check it when you get a chance. It talks about how incredible this woman is. How she's got her own. She's an entrepreneur. She's a mover and a shaker. She is a philanthropist. Hello, somebody. And then it's almost like, an, oh, by the way, her husband is known in the gates. Anyway, she's great. She's awesome. She's blessed. She's rich. This dude is like an extra in the movie. He has no lines. You barely even see him. As a matter of fact, you wouldn't even know he was there unless the co-star pointed and said, there he is. It's my husband. And it's not male bash, it's not about that. But it's about the revelation that the woman all by herself was created in the image of God. And this is important and it's worth underscoring and stating over and over and over again because there is a lie that I know who started, and we'll get to that in a second. I know who started and I know why they started it. There is a lie that keeps, unfortunately, a large percentage of women being distracted by trying to find Mr. Right instead of becoming Miss Right. Are you hearing me? And it's a distraction from identity. So God creates man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Are you hearing me? You by yourself. See, see, we are robbed of, of the fullness of the expression of God if we don't see the woman by herself created in his image. We get half the revelation. And if we get half of the revelation, we project half of the revelation. If we project half of the revelation, we get back half of the revelation. Are we together? It's tight, but it's right. As Bishop would say. This is so important. I'm on this thing. I'm like, like fascinated right now. Because I realize that we haven't even seen the full potential of the woman. Oh, God help me. And as I started researching this, it bugged me out to like, I, I was clueless to things like women couldn't own property. I ain't talking about 150 years ago. I'm talking about like 19th century or the last, in the 1900s. Couldn't even own property. And you know what's crazy, and I like to step on some toes, but you know what's crazy is, I'm talking about in America, and America was founded supposedly on Christian ideals. So it wasn't like these evil, wicked people saying that women, you know what I mean, or at least they weren't projecting themselves to be evil, wicked people. But there was something in the consciousness of man that thought that the woman was less than. And maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's the old King James Bible. 
You know, somebody, you know, I, well, listen, I, I grew up on the old King James, and if you would even think about another translation, New King James, NIV, anything like that, you would get like, you know, you, 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 you just lost it. Recognize that that's just a translation, too. Hello, somebody. But the old King James says, you know, and God gave her, gave him a help meet, right? A help meet. Uh, and when you think about a help meet, I mean, it's almost like the woman was treated like the assistant. So God is, I mean, mankind has got this universe to run. And, you know, he's busy, so he needs a PA. So it's not, not quite him, but just help me out with the small stuff. And unfortunately, that has gotten into our psyche, and has gotten to our consciousness. And over thousands of years, we have projected that. And because we were actually supposed to support the true identity, right? That's what leadership is about. Leadership is not about bossship. Leadership is about serving. It's about serving identity and serving destiny and making certain that the deposit that God has made gets realized and released. And over time, if you hear something enough, if people project onto you enough, then you start thinking it. And as a man thinks, he is. It's heavy. I know where it started. I'm excited because there's so much in the woman that's getting ready to be released. And we as men have the anointing to release it. I think mean, that's why a woman is not preaching this message. That's why a grown man is preaching it with a bow tie on. <laughs> I want to show you why there is such an attack on the identity of a woman. I'm going to show you why. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Are we together? It's going to make sense. We've got this mind renewal. This is good. This is good. Because some stuff is going to change. There's some things on the inside of you. There's a God dream on the inside of you that can't be activated until you know who you are. Hmm. Yeah, I can't wait. All right, so... This is after the fall, and this is when the Lord is handing out situations. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, because you have beguiled them, because you've messed everything up, watch this. This is the curse that the Lord put on the serpent. Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put, now pay attention here, and I will put enmity, this literally means hostility. I will put hostility between you and the who? Oh, God. This is where the beef started. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. Just say lie on that for a minute. Not on the man. Mm -mm. I'm going to put enmity between you and the woman. There's going to be great hostility between the two of you. It's on. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And if you're taking notes, underline that word seed, because that's one of the unique dynamics of the godness of a woman. Her ability to release, to manifest seed. Okay, so I'll put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall, the he shall they're talking about, the he is her seed. This is what God is saying to the serpent. He shall, the seed of the woman, will bruise your head. And that word bruise literally has the idea of like just putting a gaping wound 
in your head. And that word head is not even really like head head. It's, it represents authority. It represents the top. It represents chief. So basically what God is saying when he's punishing the serpent is he's saying, I'm going to put beef between you, the woman and you. And guess what she's going to do? She's going to crush your power. She's going to crush your power. She's going to crush your, she's going to do it, not the man. Oh, this is so good. Because you would think, you'd be like, yeah, I'm going to get the man, the man's going, you know what I mean? He's going to mind, he's going to tear you up. He's like, no, it's going to be the woman. The seed that comes out, what the woman births. It's going to crush you. Are we together? Uh -huh. The seed of the woman is going to bruise your head. And you shall bruise his heel. So in other words, there'll be a little pushback. But she's going she's to crush your head. That's where it started. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow. So everybody's getting their deal, right? The, the, the serpent is getting his curse, and the woman is getting her deal because she made a mistake, and Adam gets his. But look at what the woman got. Watch this. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Wow. Bible is so true. So true. I was standing at the beach last night praying, and those stars were up there just like he said. Clouds were up there just like he said, and the ocean was there just like he said. Thousands, millions, whatever, years later, just like he said. Blew me away. I was humbled. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire, watch this, check this out. It says, your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. This is the curse. So a lot of times, we are actually living in the curse without knowing it. That whole dynamic, it's a man's world. That's living in the curse. The being bound with a desire for your husband over any other desire was not God's original intention for you. Adam was the one like, whoa, bone of my bones. Woman, wow. Whoa, man. It doesn't say she was like, Adam. Just go with me. Doesn't say that. But as part of the curse now, part of the curse, not the norm, the curse is her desire all she wants all she can think about all she can proverbs 31 gussy up for <laughs> is to be somebody's wife and not only that but to ultimately be ruled over you see it. Some, let me tell you how subconscious this works. And I get that, and, and uh, Christina had a prophetic word I'm going to have her share at the end as it relates to that. But the crazy thing is, sometimes, if you're honest, the only reason why you want to get whole is so that you can make a greater presentation to a man. Not you, but those who are watching the live, live feed here. Lord, help me to be Proverbs 31 so that I can get a man. And if you're honest, you will Proverbs 31 long enough to get your Boaz. And when you get your Boaz, thank you, Lord, and you're gone. 
So you see here in the text that having this, this you know, this thing, this, this desire for a husband is actually part of the curse. I'm not saying to desire a husband is part of the curse, but when it becomes this thing where you feel less than, and it becomes your life's pursuit, you're actually operating under the curse. And also, if it says that part of the curse is that he is to rule over you, brothers, you ain't going to like it. It's tight, but it's right. It means that his position and his post was never to rule over you. It says to rule over the fish and the animals and the sea and the earth, but not other people. And especially not the woman because she was created in God's image too. I'm glad I've got a few weeks to, to massage this truth in. So the question really is, who is the woman? Who is she? Let me show you something else too. Uh, let's go to Revelation chapter, chapter 12. This one hit me too. Because I want to talk about the, the, this animosity. Men are insecure, but not like most women. And it's not woman bashing either. I'm just, I'm just saying. There's a reason why, why, and when I say we in the context, I'm just I'm trying to identify. So I'm not I'm a grown man. But so when I say we in the context of a woman, I'm just I'm identifying. Text. Now a great sign appeared in heaven. A what? A woman. It's so powerful because a lot of times when you read about women in the Bible, we know more about Jezebel than we do Esther. Isn't it something that, particularly when you recognize the enemy is an accuser, isn't it something how it's always a Jezebel? Why is Jezebel more uh, known about? than Esther, or Deborah, or Mary, or Elizabeth. Because it's the other guy's job to highlight not the hero, but the villain. All right, now a great sign appeared in heaven. A, say the word with me. A woman clothed with the sun. Come on, somebody, where are my poets at? A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet. Can't you see somebody standing up going for it? The poetry lounge. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. 12 represents government, represents the kingdom, represents there's a fullness dynamic to that. She? She's a representation of what you as a woman are. So she has this now a great sign appeared, a woman clothed with the sun with the moon on her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being watch this with chart, with child, with child. Man can't be with child. We can't be with child. So there's something in the identity in the God likeness of a woman that is directly related with her ability to carry child, to carry a child. The natural always reflects the spiritual. So there is something divinely significant about the woman being able to receive seed, to carry seed, to hold seed, and to produce and to birth, to manifest into the earth what God intended spiritually this is why abortion is an issue right and let me just say uh, listen in a room this size there are at least 50 abortions in here i get it or 50 accounts of abortion so this is not judgment because god is a god of restoration he's a god of redemption god stood on that cross and he knew before you even went into that room what would happen and he says go and sin no more i don't condemn you hello somebody 
I get it. I understand. So don't feel condemned because that's the other guy. That's not, what, that's not where this is coming from. But let me tell you why abortion is such an issue. And particularly as we read this thing out, is because what it does is it takes the uniqueness of a woman, the unique God quality of a woman in her ability to conceive seed and get pregnant and make her believe that that is a curse instead of a blessing. I'm in this situation. This is a curse to my life. This is not good. Do you see the working of it? It's designed to take away, to strip away the ability of the woman to have the revelation of who she is, this unique thing about her is that she can conceive seed and birth in the earth. This is part of what makes her like God. This is a part of her God identity. So if I can make the woman think that, oh, this is going to ruin your life, or this is bad, or this is negative, or some knucklehead, come to the woman and tell her, hey, I'm not ready to have a father. You were ready last night. You were ready last night. Everything in your anatomy said you were ready. What are you talking about? You were ready. You're not ready. Take a cold shower. If you're not ready to do... Hello, somebody. You're not ready. But back to the point. Do you see how if I can make that which makes, which is part of my being created in the image of God identity, if I can sow a seed in your mind and tell you that that is a curse, then I begin to chip away at the very thing that makes you a woman, that makes you a woman, that makes you like God. Oh, it's so clever. It's so clever. And when you finish seeing this, it's really going to make sense. So this woman adorned, boom, boom, boom. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. Mm. There's a lot to I wish I had about another hour with you. Because there's a lot in that. It was almost like a war cry. It was almost like a, ooh. But anyway. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold... A great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diamonds, seven diadems rather, on his heads. So there's nobody out there but the woman and the dragon and no man in sight. It's heavy. Come on, man. I know we like that old macho macho stuff. But it ain't here. The showdown is between the woman and the dragon. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Are you seeing this? It didn't work. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. Watch this, though. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has, where she has a place prepared by God. God's got her. That they should feed her there 1,260 days. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. Nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. There's a lot in that. Then I heard a loud voice. I'm going to just move through this quickly. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night, stay with me, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe 
you, you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants, of the, to the ha- inhabitants, speaking in tongues here, sorry. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath, watch this, because he knows that, his, that he has a short time. Now the dragon, now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he did what? He persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the presence of the serpent. Now watch his reaction. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth. He is trying to get this woman. The serpent spewed water out of his mouth like like a flood after the woman. I feel this thing so strongly that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. He cannot stop. He is so angry. Why? Because God told him in the beginning, she is going to crush your head. She represents everything that speaks to your demise and your defeat. So I've got to deceive you. I've got to accuse you. I've got to make you think you're less than. And unfortunately, I got knucklehead Fellas, serving my purposes. So he's going after her. He's angry. He's trying all kind of stuff, but it won't work. So even when he does it, even when it seems like the woman is down and out, can't vote getting beat up, got to wear a full-on thing, body thing, because some man, wait, time out. I've got to wear this because he might be crazy? Maybe he ought to wear it. Anyway, I love everybody. But you hear me? I'm just talking about injustice. Woman who was caught in the act of adultery. She was caught in the act of adultery. It takes two to tangle. Where was the man? And I think the crazier part is she actually went. I'd be like, if I'm going, you, you, come, you, you going too. But because she didn't know who she was, she felt like she was less than, she actually submitted herself to this foolish hypocrisy. So for years and thousands of years, the negative one has been persecuting, has been lying, has been beating down, has been projecting a lesser identity and a false identity over the woman for years. But it ain't working. And I'll tell you why it's not working. Because God has placed destiny inside of the woman. What if instead of leading, instead of being the boss, what if the man's job was to create an environment for the seed to grow? What if the real Joseph to be Glorified in the scriptures, not the Joseph who became like the king in Egypt, but what if it was the Joseph who took care of a child that wasn't even his, that took in a woman and nurtured her and protected her and hid her and stood up for her until what she had on the inside of her was birthed? What if that's the real Joseph? That's going to release the blessing of the first Joseph. What if the man's job was not to rule over, baby, I've got this dream, you just serve this dream. What if it's about the dream of God that's in her? And what if our job is to speak into it, is to work hard to create an atmosphere around her to serve that? She, we cannot receive seed. We can't manifest anything. Now, God allowed us to participate. Thank God. (laughs) 
But, but, I mean, because think about it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to wrap this because we're going on it next week. We're still on it because I got a lot more to talk about. But, but what if the uniqueness about the woman was her, in her ability to carry God's dreams on the inside and to birth them? What if we talk too much and what if we need to just shut up and sit down and listen and say, what is the God dream that's on the inside of you? What if we've been talking too much, CJ? And not listening enough. And as a result of it, what God wants to, to birth, that was a lie. what God wants to birth can be birth. Family, I'm telling you, I think that's where we're at. Wow. What if we're not supposed to be the big bad men? Pulling out script, scripture to try to force. Come on, somebody. It's funny how we'll pull out a scripture, boy. That's a religious spirit. This is the year of the woman. God is impregnating. Let me say this, and then I'm done, and we'll pick it up next week. Anytime God is getting ready to do something revolutionary in the earth, he does it through a woman. Oh, I'm going to say that again. Anytime God is getting ready to do something revolutionary in the earth, he does it. When the Christ was coming, when it was time for the Christ to be born, he touches two women. We'll look at it in detail next week. Elizabeth and Mary. Oh, God, I feel it. He touches two women. And one of them was barren. Oh, God, I feel it. That's why if you feel barren, rejoice. Just because you're barren today doesn't mean you're always going to be. Are you hearing me? I don't care if you've been barren all your life. Elizabeth had been barren her entire life. She was old. Come on. When God wanted to birth something in the earth through, through the nation of Israel, when he wanted to create a nation of Israel, we always talk about Abraham, but there would be no nation without Sarah. That's why she's called the mother of all nations. She is the one who had to receive seed. But we don't even talk about Sarah. No Sarah. No destiny. But the earth helped the woman. Of course it did. Why? There's destiny on the inside of women. But the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And of course, and the dragon was what? Enraged with the woman. How has this played itself out? Can't you tell that society hates women? If you haven't figured that out, think about it. We dress you up like crazy with everything showing. Come on, somebody. We talk crazy about you in our music. Hello, somebody. We make you feel like you're, you're less than. We call a hundred of you in a room. No, we call a thousand of you in a room knowing we're only going to pick one of you. Hello, somebody. Can't you t Man, don't make me. I promise this is positive, but we got to understand what's happening. Can't we tell? Can't we see that there is a spirit out there that hates women? We tell you, this is what you got to look like. This is what you're good for. Shut up and sit down. Do it my way. Bounce. That's a, that's a, you come a dime a dozen. Hello. And if we don't know, and I, again, that's that we thing I was telling you about. If we don't know who we are, and that goes on both sides of the sex coin. If we don't know who we are, we're going to buy it. 
Our desire is going to be for our husband, and we're going to let him rule over us. Talk to us crazy. Treat us like we don't want to. I don't want to wear that. Well, you got to. Okay. I don't want to say that. Well, you have to. Okay. No, there's a revolution coming. Hello, somebody. There's a revolution, and women are going to begin to take. I speak this prophetically. They're going to begin to take her place in society, and brothers, we are going to have to be Joseph's. We're going to have to swallow our pride, right? All this ego stroking stuff. Come on, I'm a brother, so I know. You know what I mean? All this ego stroking, you better get delivered. Get healed. Otherwise, we'll be hindering what God is doing. Are you hearing me? And the beautiful thing is we're going to see stuff we've never seen before. We're going to see once we release women to be them, and we take all of these distracting expectations off of them and let them really like, like just, just sprout out and spread out and spread their wings like God had given this woman wings. Come on, somebody. This is what God showed me in a dream. It was a dream to call the ministry. He showed me a young lady who had wings who just didn't know it. That's why this is so emotional for me. This is literally the dream that God gave me. That told me that I was called to speak into people's lives. In the dream, it was a young girl, my daughter, who could fly and rise above anything. She just didn't know it. And as I told her, as I spoke into her life, and I said, because I loved her, I'm like, baby, you can fly. I'm telling you, you can fly, you can fly. And as she began to believe it, she spread out her wings. And she was raised up above everything. And I don't believe that's just for women, but I'm talking to women today. And when we... Again, that we think, take our place and really embrace that identity and begin to rethink some things. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Begin to rethink some things. Why do I do what I do? Who do I believe that I am? Do I believe that I'm completed because of a guy? That's a lie. That's, that's a straight out. It's not like it's a, it's a lie. It's not true. Sorry. Heck, you might discover another side of you and like that so much that you'll be delivered at all from the concept of I need a man. And if you don't see certain things, you're like, I'm good. I'm good with me. I want to pray and we're going to pick this up next week. I got a lot more to talk about. Come on, stand with me. And brothers, fellas, homies, my dogs, my dogs. Mm. There's so much in this. I remember the Lord said something to me, and I wasn't even really deep in God when he said it. But God began to reveal to me that I was actually part of the problem and not the solution. The reason why I dress up today is I'm serious about this message. And what I want the brothers to do who come next week, in your own fashion, is we're all going to dress up. You know, if you've got a tux, wear it. I might wear a tux next week, seriously. <laughs> and what it is, and you know, it's not about what we wear, and if you don't have it, I get it. But it's not about what we wear, but, but it's basically a sign that said, you know what, I heard, I heard, I heard it. And I'm committed to be, to being a gentleman. And, and I'm here just to say, I'm not even dressing up for me. I'm dressing up for the sisters that will see me that I know have been hearing this word. And that's going to communicate to them that I am committing to be a gentleman. I'm committing to be a real Joseph. And I'm going to serve the purposes of God that are in, on the inside of you. And I'm not going to be stealing from you anymore. I'm telling you, there's a revolution coming. This is so powerful. It's happening. And I'm excited about not just being better, but I'm excited about what's going to be manifest when we live like this, when we do that, when we see a woman. We're going to, I just pray this right now. You're going to begin to see women differently. And, and your desire to see them be fulfilled and walk in the fullness of their identity is going to be greater than your heart on. I'm sorry. This is who I am. 
is going to be greater than your lusting. Because you heard this. Because you heard this. Because you heard this. If that offended you, you probably need a little more Jesus in your life. <laughs> when you look, you're going to see destiny. Hello, somebody. You're going to say, there's a God dream on the inside of that woman, and I don't want to mess with God. I don't want to be a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the solution. And I'm not going to be partnering with the adversary against them. Are you hearing me? So we're going to dress up, man. I'm going to wear a tux next week. It's hot. I don't care. I'm going to sacrifice. One week. And it's just to say, I get it. It's to say, I'm sorry. Hello. I'm sorry for what I projected. I'm sorry for what my, my brethren have projected. And I'm saying to you, I'm dressing up. I'm, 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 it's almost like putting a ring on it, but I already got a ring on it. And I'm just, I'm going to stand in front of you and just be like, look, I'm here to say I honor you. I'm here to say there's a dream on the inside of you that's big, and I'm here to serve that dream, and that's why we're going to do it. We ain't doing it to get no odds, because that's that foolish Proverbs 31, miss backwards Proverbs 31 thing. Don't be like, oh, can we go out? No, we ain't going out. We ain't going out. I want to serve your dream. We can go over to Starbucks, have a cup of coffee, tell me what the dream of God is on the inside of you, and I'll find a way to serve it. That's what we'll talk about. Because that's what this is about. Are we together? So I just want to pray. It's a revolution. And I'm telling you, it's going to be a renewing of the mind. And you're going to write about it. I'm so grateful you're going to write about it. There's going to be music about it. There's going to be, be movies about it. I just believe that we're going to catch this thing. And we're going to use the gifting that God has given to us to release. This is God's dream. This ain't Teray talking because it's a nice idea. This is God's dream. We just saw it. We saw it. Created in the image of God. Dang. And we've been suppressing that? See, whenever you suppress God, you block your own blessing. Because there is something of God's release in that human being that you get when you honor. That doesn't necessarily help the person, but it helps you because you, when you honor properly, receive the reward that's on the inside of that person. So I'm going after the nookie when there's really like, like some big glorious thing that will bless my life beyond the 30 minutes and I'm going to be messing around in this thing. Oh, well, you came to real church. In case you didn't know, you came to a real church. This stuff that needs to be talked about. But like I said, this is valuable so that men can project right but you got to help us out by embracing your identity and expecting right so we can be reminded that we're off when we come at you in a way that is less than who you are. Help us out, please. So I want to pray. I want to pray and we got to go. Father, Lord, here we are aiming to get it right. And we thank you for your word. And we thank you for truth. And I thank you for restoration that is here. Even the restoration of the identity of the woman completely independent from man. And God, forgive us for every time that because of our own selfishness, our own insecurities. Come here, Christina. Because of our own selfishness and our own insecurities, we abused our leadership and made the woman shrink when we're supposed to release her to grow. Forgive us for that. And God, since you're a God of restoration, the years that man has restricted and limited woman, even that which is as absurd as not allowing them to enter into a pulpit, have mercy on us. 
And Lord, for the years that the locusts have eaten, even through us, I pray that you would bring about a restorative harvest in the consciousness, in the spirit, in the life of women all over this world. Amen. Lord, in Iran, in Pakistan, in the Middle East, here, all over this place, in India, so that the universe can be blessed, I mean truly blessed, by the unique gifting and expression and identity, the critical identity that you've placed on the inside of the woman. Changes.